Coronavirus numbers continue to drop here in Israel with around a third of the population vaccinated as government ministers look at further relaxing restrictions. Just a little more than a month remains until Israelis head to the polls for the fourth time in less than two years, with polls showing current Prime Minister Netanyahu in the lead. And European states are slamming Iran after yet another violation of the 2015 nuclear accord. Hello, I'm Sarah Coates. Thanks for joining me here on the news desk. Well, let's begin in Israel, where it seems as though the nation could be on its way out of the coronavirus pandemic, with the health ministry saying the number of new infections dropped below the 5,000 mark on Thursday, that same day that many Israeli students finally got back to the classroom. Well, the warm weather also seeing many people out and about, with restrictions now being lifted, although many businesses and a number of large malls have been defying current regulations opening their doors to customers. We wanted to open the shopping mall in the morning, but the police came. The government decided to stop us from opening and send police and inspectors to prevent the opening. Let's now go to our correspondent, Daniel Samar, who joins us from Tel Aviv. Hello there, Daniel. Uh, walk us through the very latest. Uh, as I mentioned, a lot of people have been seen out and about visiting stores, uh, which they haven't been able to do in a very, very long time. Uh, what's next in terms of rolling back these restrictions? Yeah, it's an important question, Sarah. Well, let's really just start with what we did see here today. You now, uh, there's no question that people were flooding the streets, at least here in Tel Aviv. We're not only talking about the first weekend that started since the latest lockdown, but also uh, a fairly good day as far as weather is concerned. So you did see mm -hmm. hundreds of Israelis in natural parks, uh, maybe even thousands in certain areas, and certainly a lot of people going out and about frequenting shops that are re reopened, although so as you mentioned, Sarah, we're not really back at a total um, normalcy here as far as the Israeli public and as far as commerce is concerned throughout the country. And it will take stages in order to reach that point. But because of what you described earlier, those decreasing uh, numbers in, in coronavirus cases, that is promising, especially when we talk about the Israeli market reopening completely. It still may take time. We don't have a clear sense on what the plan is. We do know that the education sector is supposed to hit the ground running this coming Sunday, which of course starts uh, the week here in Israel with most uh, students being allowed back to schools, uh, especially in those cities that are deemed green cities, that is to say cities that don't have large number of COVID-19 cases. So it did seem as though this Friday marked the beginning of what is at least a period of uh, normalcy here in Israel. Obviously, there's a lot that could still take place between now and the end of the pandemic. Uh, many people are still skeptical. I spoke to people throughout the day today, both uh, people that were just walking the streets of Tel Aviv as well as some small business owners who did say that they fear that there could be another lockdown just around the corner. And there is reason to suspect that because the numbers haven't really been as low as many uh, would hope to see at this juncture. But it does seem as though the vaccine has been effective. And it also is possible, though, Sarah, at the end of the day, that at the end of March, we could see another lockdown also because of the Passover holiday, generally speaking, since the COVID-19 pandemic struck Israel. Israel, we've seen lockdowns almost on each, on each major holiday season. This would certainly be the, the start of the spring holiday here in Israel, so it's possible that could happen. Yeah, and Daniel, uh, regarding this successful vaccine campaign where uh, around one-third of Israelis have already had the shot, what can you tell us uh, regarding the news coming in that uh, people may be sanctioned if they don't? Right. So this is really what a lot of people are concerned may happen, especially when I say concerned, it's those that are reluctant to get the vaccine, either because they're scared or because they don't believe in it. And both uh, camps do exist here in Israel uh, and elsewhere around the world. But it does seem as though there'll be some severe limitations on those uh, individuals' ability to frequent certain areas. Um, we understand that there has been talk of limiting uh, their ability to really enter certain vicinities, whether it be, um, you know, places of leave 
leisure uh, as opposed to places like uh, uh, supermarkets and pharmacies would obviously be permissible. But beyond that, there might be some strong limitations limited. We have yet to understand how the Israeli government plans to enforce this and plans to monitor it. That will be another complicated task for the Israeli government, who is certainly hoping that most of the Israeli public does volunteer to get the vi- vaccine as it's been offered uh, to many people throughout the country in swathes of people really uh, being able to get the vaccine in ways that they were not able to just a few weeks ago. So there is still uh, a very strong effort being made by the Israeli government to reel in those that are not getting the vaccine, to reel in those especially that are willing to take it, but maybe a little bit skeptical. Uh, so we're likely going to see a lot more attention being paid towards this. We've already seen it, Sarah, from certain elements of the Israeli government, the Blue and White Party in the last week, both from uh, Blue and White Party leader Benny Gantz, the defense minister and ultimate prime minister, as well as the foreign minister Gabi Ashkenazi, both making very clear statements encouraging the Israeli public to get vaccinated, even uh, Gabi Ashkenazi hinting that those that don't are endangering the rest of the public. So we might be seeing a little bit more of that sort of comments be coming out from elements within the Israeli government, as there is concern that those that aren't vaccinated could continue to spread the virus. And we are still seeing some areas that are still a subject of concern. All right. Daniel Semak there in Tel Aviv. Thank you for the update. Well, in the Indiana, United States, rather, the rollout of its vaccination campaign is anything but on track with President Joe Biden urging Americans to be patient as the virus continues to sweep the country. Well, it's fast approaching a grim milestone of half a million virus-related deaths with health officials predicting that number could go as high as 700,000. Well, Biden's pledging to have all citizens vaccinated by the end of summer, speaking during a tour of a lab in Washington. It's no secret that the vaccination program was in much worse shape than my team and I anticipated. We were under the impression and been told that we had a lot more resources than we did when we came into office. While scientists did their job in discovering vaccines in record time, my predecessor, be very blunt about it, did not do his job in getting ready for the massive challenge of vaccinating hundreds of millions of Americans. Well, keen political onlookers are pointing out what could be seen as distance between Israel and the US, with no date announced yet for a conversation between President Joe Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Well, during a media briefing, when asked when the conversation would take place, the White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki told reporters that it'll happen soon, with Psaki calling Israel a key U.S. partner. Well, this is the State Department has spoken about the situation regarding Israel's bid to move forward with furthering settlements in the West Bank, having this to say. I believe it is critical uh, to uh, refrain from unilateral steps uh, that exacerbate tensions and that undercut efforts uh, to advance a negotiated two-state solution. solution. Unilateral steps might include uh, annexation of, te- of territory, uh, settlement activity, uh, demolitions, incitement to violence, provi- the provision of compensation for individuals uh, imprisoned for acts of terrorism. Um, we uh, have continued um, to emphasize um, that it is critical to refrain from all of those activities. Now to a developing story in Germany, France and the UK are condemning Iran's latest violations of the 2015 nuclear accord. It comes after the UN nuclear watchdog announced that it has verified that the Islamic Republic has produced uranium metal despite warnings from world powers. Germany, France and the UK releasing a statement saying... We note with grave concern the recent confirmation by the IAEA that Iran is producing uranium metal in violation of the accord, adding Iran has no credible civilian justification for nuclear accord breaches. All right, up next, who is the front runner to become Israel's next prime minister when elections are held in just over a month? We'll have that for you and plenty more right after this. Stay with us.